be measured by direct or indirect methods direct methods cardiac output can be measured directly by placing a electromagnetic flow meter in the ascending iota or by using cardiometer these are accurate methods of measuring cardiac output however these direct methods are applicable only in experimental animals or in humans undergoing open thoracic surgery in human cardiac output is usually determined by using doppler uh, combined with echocardiography some of the indirect methods of measurement of cardiac output are fixed method indicator dilution method thermodilution method ballistocardiography echocardiography x-ray method and pulse pressure method fix on um, fixed method Fick principle is defined as the amount of substance taken up by any organ or by whole body per unit time is equal to the artery venous difference of substance times blood flow. The measure the procedure is cardiac output can be measured by measuring the amount of oxygen consumed by body in a given period and dividing this value by artery venous difference of oxygen across the lungs. the oxygen consumption of the body is measured by spirometry as the arterial oxygen content is the same in all the parts of the body for measuring oxygen content of the arterial blood the blood is obtained from any peripheral artery the venous blood is collected from the pulmonary artery by placing a catheter in into it through the heart then cardiac output can be calculated as the cardiac cardiac output from the left ventricle is equal to oxygen consumption in ml per minute divided by artery venous difference of the oxygen advantage of this method is this is accurate the no chemical is injected into the body some of the disadvantages disadvantages are the catheterization should be done by expert hand hospitalization is required for catheterization and patient may be apprehensive of catheterization that increase the cardiac output simultaneous measurement of oxygen consumption makes the process difficult it is difficult to measure cardiac output by this method in ambulatory patient and during exercise second one is indicator dilution method principle here is a known amount of indicator is injected into the circulation usually through arm vein and the concentration of the indicator is measured in serial samples of arterial blood the output of the heart is equal to the amount of indicator in- indicated injected divided by its average concentration in the arterial blood after a single circulation through the heart the procedure is this method is popularly known as hamilton's dye dilution method the dye injected is usually evans blue or indocyanin green before injection of the dye 10 ml of peripheral venous blood is withdrawn and uh, divided equal into two samples in one sample of 5 ml enough quantity of dye is injected uh, to give a concentration of 0.5 mg per 100 ml the other sample is used as a blank 1 ml of dye solution containing 5 mg is injected rapidly in the basilic vein from the limb artery the blood samples are collected at an interval of 2 seconds in serial tubes the tubes are then centrifuged together with the standard blank tubes following which the concentration of the dye is determined photocolorimetrically the concentration of successive sample is plotted in a semi log paper the resulting concentration of the dye in the arterial blood changes with the time first the concentration raises as the indicator carried by the fast moving blood reaches the arterial sampling point second re- second reaches peak as a majority of the indicator substance arrives at the sampling point this diagram uh, showing the concentration of the dye uh, against the time it is gradually the concentration of the dye is gradually going to increase and at another point it starts uh, uh, again increasing because of the recirculation then one 
the time required for one cycle is calculated by extra polluting the descending limb that gives the the time required for one cycle and the area under this curve is utilized for the measurement of the average concentration of the dye in each circulation finally the concentration falls as indicator carried by the slow moving blood arrives at that point thus the result obtained gives a curve with an ascending limb a peak and a descending limb but the descending limb ends with a rise the slope of the descending limb is extrapolated to the abscissa the point on the time scale at which uh, it touches the abscissa gives the time of the first passage of the dye through the artery that is t the advantage of this method is uh, it's a accurate method and disadvantage is that it should not be repeated in short time as concentration of the dye in the earlier earlier use may give errors then thermodilution method here the principle is same as that of uh, indicator dilution technique in this method the cold saline is used as indicator a double lumen catheter is used following catheterization the cold saline is injected into the right atrium through the one side of the catheter the thermistor is placed on the other end of the other side of the catheter change in the temperature of the blood is recorded in the pulmonary artery through the thermistor placed in the catheter the change in the temperature is inversely proportional to the amount of blood flowing through the pulmonary artery advantages are saline is harmless cold is dissipated so recirculation is not a problem it can be repeated many times if needed usually it is preferred for children as saline is non toxic and useful in sick patients uh and some of the disadvantage are the cardiac catheterization is required here also other methods like echocardiography this is non invasive technique uh, in which the ultrasonic waves emitted from the transducer detects waves reflected from various parts of the heart when it is combined with the doppler technique it determines the velocity and volume of the flow of blood through various cardiac valves principally is ultrasound waves are transmitted to the chest and the reflection of these waves of the various parts of the heart is analyzed the transducer which is a small microphone like device is held against the chest the transducer sends and receives ultrasound waves by moving the transducer to various position of the chest different structures of the heart and the blood flow are analyzed the computer software assembles the reflected ultrasound waves to create an image of heart these images appear on a television screen the parameters observed are size and shape of the heart pumping efficacy of the heart and wall abnormalities so it is very advantageous as it is non invasive and accurate diagnosis and uh, devel- to develop a treatment plan is uh, better here it is safe and painless transthoracic echocardiography is used in critically ill patients as well the major limitation is that it is often difficult to obtain good quality of image from the person who have broad chest uh, or their obese or suffering from chronic lung disease ballistocardiography in this method vibrations generated by each heartbeat are received and converted into waveforms by transducer that records the cardiac activities on a ink recorder from the recording cardiac output is calculated calculating using a special formula by analyzing the recorded waves however cardiac output measured by this method is not accurate one x-ray method in this method radio opaque dye is injected intravenously and then the size of the heart is detected by serial x- x-rays in systole and diastole from which the cardiac output is measured using computer program then pulse pressure method so this is the difference between systolic and diastolic pressures provides a rough idea about the 